Hi, welcome to story number 20. When I was young, there was no internet and no eBay. If you wanted to buy or sell something, you advertised in a paper uh, called the Trading Post. We also didn't have credit or debit cards. It was just cash and what was called a cheque. Now, not everyone had a book of cheques called a chequebook, but my dad did. And you had to be pretty adventurous to be friends with my family. <laughs> Here are two couples that were brave enough to do it. The Talles and the Hansons. If you invited us over, you got 14 people straight off. Despite this, my parents made some great friends over the years. And one of our very special friends was Uncle Jack. Jack and Norma Hanson went to our church. Jack worked for the water board and loved to organize things and people, which made him a good match with my dad. I think they first met while organizing a mystery bus tour for about 300 people from our church. I still remember the pole pillow fights and the broom throwing. Now that was dangerous. Anyway, the result was that they became best mates. Our two families would often go on adventures together. I remember the first outing we went on together was when Uncle Jack took us all horse riding. Now Jack's wife, Norma, was a lovely, sweet lady. And they had two children, a boy called Rodney and a girl named Sherelle. Sherelle was a similar age as Big Mike, Bobo and me. And of course, we all fell instantly in love with her making everything we did with them that little bit more interesting. Unfortunately, alongside Big Mike and Bobo, I had all my work cut out for me just to get her attention. <laughs> there I am at the end of the line, trying to get her attention. Now there was nothing that Uncle Jack didn't like more than a bargain and a new project. Uncle Jack called my dad one morning. G'day, g'day Fred, Fred. Yes, I've, uh, I've seen this boat in the trading boat's post. Looks like a bargain, uh, but I haven't got enough cash. I was wondering if, if you could use your checkbook and uh, if I buy it, I'll pay you back during the week. Of course, Dad agreed. We all went with Dad and Uncle Jack to view the boat. Our job was not to look interested and to say things like, the tire on the trailer looks flat, Uncle Jack. It looks a bit old, Uncle Jack. Hey, Uncle Jack, the uh, the motor looks a bit small. Hmm, is, is that rust there, Uncle Jack? This was supposed to help Uncle Jack get a good price, and it must have worked. A deal was done and the boat was purchased. Hey, Fred, uh, do you mind taking the boat back to your place? I haven't told Norma yet and uh, well I want to surprise her. So we took the boat home to our place but Jack did not get back to dad on Sunday or Monday, Tuesday or even Wednesday. On Thursday dad got a call. Uh, g'day uh, Fred Sears here. Oh hello Jack how you going? Oh, was, uh, was Norma surprised? Oh. oh, she was surprised, but not in a very good way. Oh, and that's put you in a bit of an awkward position. Hmm. Well, look, mate, look, mate, never mind. Me and the boys, we've, we've always wanted a boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, know, I know I said that, but uh, no, it'd be great. I'm sh no, we'd love, we'd love to have it. It's okay. No worries. Okay. Okay then. Huh. See you soon. Bye, mate. Oh my gosh. What happened then? Said my mum. Looks like we've got a boat. Said my dad. Now my dad's willingness to help, his generosity to look after a mate, saw us with a boat. And we kids were ecstatic. A 14 foot blue fiberglass runabout with a 40 horsepower Evinrude outboard motor. 
Uncle Jack finally talked Auntie Norma into buying a boat too. And Uncle Jack, being Uncle Jack, had to have a boat that would be faster than ours, which he achieved by buying a smaller boat, 12 foot, with a motor three times the size, 120 horsepower Mercury. Now with two boats, our families would often go water skiing together and we'd get to see more of Shirelle. And despite my incredible lack of coordination, I actually managed to learn too, though I was the last in the family to get up on those skis. And now I have many good memories of going on water skiing trips, of teaching people to water ski, of zooming across the wake of their little boat with the wind in my hair. Well, yeah, a distant memory now. It also caused us to go with a group of families, including Uncle Jack's, on a water skiing holiday to Kadmira Lake on the southeast coast of New South Wales, where I made the most important, life-changing decision of my whole life. But, but that's another story. The thing is, all these good things came about because my father was generous. He was giving. He, he was uh, happy to help out a mate. Jesus is recorded as saying in the Bible, it is more blessed to give than to receive. <laughs> and another time he says, give and it will be given to you. In good measure, pressed down, shaken together, <laughs> running over. It will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. I would tell my kids that often people will advise them to keep things for themselves, protect what they have. Be careful not to give too much away. Always look after yourself first. But Jesus told me and showed me through my parents' example that it pays big dividends to be generous, to be giving. So if you have an opportunity to be helpful, don't pass that opportunity up. Give it a go. And I'll see you in story number 21. Bye.